everybody, I'm Becky Adams. Thank you for stopping by the Scrapbook and Cards Today YouTube channel. Today I am showing you how one of my projects from the spring 2022 issue of Scrapbook and Cards Today magazine came together. I am using the Great Outdoors collection from Doodlebug Design on this project. I'm trimming down this lighter blue graph paper. This is what most of my layout will be built off of. And then this uh, blue gingham paper will be, or the darker blue gingham paper will be the, the base of the layout, so the very background. But you will only see a little bit around the edges. So I cut out the center of the background so that I could save that for another project because this is one of my favorite colors and designs from Doodlebug. To adhere the two background pieces together, I'm using quarter inch uh, double-sided tape from scrapbook.com. And when I go to adhere the two pieces together, I'm just folding in about an inch, a little more than an inch on two corners of the background uh, double-sided adhesive. Once I have it straight, I push down those two quarter corners, flip it over and pull off the rest of the backing and then when I flip it over, I have a perfectly adhered um, background. I do that so that if I did get it uh, placed crooked, it isn't as hard to pull up just those two corners as it would be if I had the whole square um, of adhesive exposed. So that's just a fun little tip that makes adhering two, two kind of background pieces together. So this is a traditional, a pretty traditional grid layout with a fun vertical title going down the center. To create the base for those, the grid, I have four pieces of pattern paper from the six by six paper pad that I cut down to four four by four inches square and then I also stitched around the edge of each of those pieces with my sewing machine and white thread before I started filming. So it's kind of hard to see here on the video but there is white stitching around each of those corners or each of those squares excuse me. So I have two photos that I am using to tell this story they are both printed at three by four with the white border. I am placing them in opposite corners of the grid in the upper left hand corner and the bottom right corner. I did need to make one adjustment to this square and there is some text on that pattern paper and I had the text going in the wrong direction. So now that we have that fixed, it's time to move on to adding the most important um, elements of the page, which to me are the photos, the journaling, and the title. So the journaling I printed on uh, vellum this time, and that is just kind of a fun element, but it also um, it helps the journaling to not stand out. It lets some of the other elements shine while still uh, telling the story, making sure the story is there, which is really important to me. So I carefully adhered that journaling to the tag using double-sided tape before I adhered it to the background. So there's actually no adhesive that you can see on that vellum. And as I mentioned earlier, the fun title goes down the center of this page in between um, all the pieces of my grid. I used a brown skinny alphabet sticker from Doodlebug to create the title. I did put eighth of an inch um, foam strips, uh, adhesive foam strips behind each of the letters. This was a little bit fussy. It was it was not easy to fit foam adhesive under those each of those letters, but it's really important for the technique that I have coming up. So I'm adhering all of those letters 
except for the letter L. And it's right there in the middle with that letter L that kind of the, the fun part of this um, design comes. So I have a piece of baker's twine that I cut to probably 12, 14 inches. And I'm carefully looping it around that letter L a couple of times before I adhere it to the background. And once I have that looped around, then I adhere that letter, or I push down that letter L and just make some casual loops going from the top left to the bottom right. This is literally called connecting those two photos to make the design a little more unified. Typically when I create a project, I like the photos right next to each other. But since this design kind of called for the photos to be in different areas of the layout, it was fun to find a, a way to connect them and make them, um, I guess, connect them, make them be together. So I'm adding a little bit more embellishment before I finish adhering the baker's twine. So here in the bottom left corner, I have a fun sticker that um, is on the sticker sheet that comes in the Great Outdoors collection pack. And I, I didn't really want the word hello there, so I layered it um, another sticker on top of that saying nature is calling and tucked a a large tree die cut there under the left hand side and then on top of that i layered a shaker doodle pop which i thought was a really fun way to create movement on the page especially when this story is about movement and about these cute kiddos playing on of the, uh, on the zip line. So I wanted to make sure that um, I didn't have that baker's twine adhered because I knew that I wanted to add particularly that sunshine kind of around that photo and I was undecided whether I wanted the baker's twine to go on top of the sunshine or just below it. Um, so it, just in just a minute, we'll go back to adhering that baker's twine. I'm just adding a few more stickers. I had a lot of fun with doodle pops on this project. I have two that bear in the upper right hand corner is a doodle pop. And then of course that tree in the bottom left corner. So now that I have um, pretty much all of my embellishments in place. There are a few bits that I will adhere in just a minute, but it is time to adhere that baker's twine. So I just carefully kind of laid out the twine how I wanted it. And then I took my liquid adhesive with a really fine tip. You need a strong liquid adhesive that has a really fine tip for this technique. And what I did is I just gently lifted up that baker's twine and put a little bit of adhesive underneath it and then nudged the baker's twine over it so that it is adhered. Typically when I've done this technique, I didn't adhere every little bit of the baker's twine, but since this project needed to go from my home to Canada and back, I needed to make sure that it was adhered and wouldn't um, wouldn't come wouldn't come unglued when I when I in the shipping process. So each end of the baker's twine is just tucked carefully under the photo, and then again just got a little bit of glue, liquid glue, um, to make sure that everything stays in place. So that fun baker's twine literally connects my photos from one, from the top right, or excuse me, top left corner to the bottom right corner. So I have just a couple of embellishments left to put in place. 
I wanted to add just a little bit more color to make sure that everything is balanced out across the layout. So I adhered these cute flowers with some pop dots. That will also help the journaling to stay in place as well since I didn't adhere it um, on that left hand side. I've got the fun butterfly die cut that goes up here at the top of the layout. I adhered the wings with a um, foam adhesive and then the center of the butterfly with liquid adhesive so that the wings of the butterfly pop up off the page a little bit. Because I used two doodle pops, there were a couple of little stickers that I I wanted to make sure and use on those projects too. So I added those cute little, uh, I think they're fi fireflies um, on the page as well. I added those file tabs next to the photos. Again, that just draws attention to the photos and, and makes them, makes the design a little more cohesive um, having those tabs next to each of the photos. I used the same bit of baker's twine to tie a bow at the top of the tag and then adhere the top of that tag with uh, some pop dots to give it a little bit more dimension. And here I have a few little bits and pieces from those doodle pops that um, I wanted to use up that the shaker doodle pop was not staying in place if I'm not sure why but I quickly fixed that with a little bit of double-sided tape and with that this layout is complete thank you so much for stopping by I appreciate you taking time out of your day to spend here on the scrapbook and cards YouTube channel with me if you haven't done so already, please make sure to subscribe. We would love to have you here. Thank you again for stopping by and I'll see you again soon.